Hey guys, what's up? My name is Tegan Delory. I am a first year electrical technician student at the King's Tech campus, and I'm going to be shooting a video showing you how to use the TIA portal version 12 to program a Simons PLC. So the first thing you're going to want to do is click on your TIA portal icon, which is the TIA B12 picture, and that'll boot up the program. Once you're in, if you've already done a project, it will take you to this screen here, and you'll be able to list all your projects. You can see I've done a few basic things. Uh, what you're going to want to do is go to create a new project. You're going to want to name it. So I'll just name it test2. Um, your file path. For me, it goes directly to my folder I named automation. For you, you're going to want to either save it to your desktop or your student drive. And of course, put the, your name in as the, as the author of the program. And then just click create and it'll take a minute to create a new project and then once you're in you're going to want to click on write PLC program now with the computers you guys have in the lab this should say device PLC1 and there will be options here fortunately mine doesn't do that so I'm going to have to go through right quick and in case you have to do this just follow these steps you want to go into somatics S7-1200 CPU, go down to unspecified CPU, and double click on the little, the only icon there. Once that's done, this is what you guys will hopefully see. So you can see up here it changed to PLC1, and these are organizational blocks. Each block is a way of creating a program or defining timers, all kinds of stuff. So all you really need to do is double click on the main icon and that'll open up your PLC diagram. So this is the actual program. This is where you'll be doing all your action, your programming right here. This is a list of all the places you can go. You have extra instructions or inputs over here. We'll talk about those later. Um, so this is your line diagram so you're going to want to put in an input any kind of input and we'll call this a stop button and then we will right click it and hit define tag and this isn't a memory it's an input so just change it to input and hit define that's all you have to do you'll notice that the stop is now in quotation marks it is not underlined in red which means it is correctly done and that it's now says percent i 0, 0.0 and that means that on your plc your power will go through your stop button and on the other side of the stop button it'll go to input zero dot zero or the zero at the top of the plc and so you just want to click on the right of whatever you last did and click add another input and this will be our start button and anytime you start to type, you start to type anything. If there's similar names, you can actually click down here, and it'll assign them to the same thing. So you can see again, as we click, as we typed in start, it's underlined in red because it wants us to define the tag. So again, your start is another input. It'll automatically change it to i 0.1. Now, if you want to do that different, you can just um, change the zero point the point one at the end to anything you want it to be on your PLC it's up to you it's just easy I find it's easier to use what it tells you and then we'll put an output so this one up here is the symbol for an output and what you want to do is I don't know we'll name this contactor because that's usually what you use for PLCs and then we'll define this tag this time we're going to click output and so now you can see it's a Q instead of an I and Q is the pretty much universal symbol for output and so as you can see it's been defined and so what we have here if we upload this to our PLC power will go through the stop button and when we push the start button the contactor will start but only until we hold it in so what you're going to want to do is click between the stop and start button click the little down arrow and that will drop down and you're going to add your ceiling circuit so we'll call this ceiling contact and then you're going to want to click on the right side of it and click up up at the top here and that'll 
bring it back up to your normal rung. And this is a little bit different. When you define the ceiling circuit, even though it's an input, you're going to define it as an output, and you're going to change it to 0, 0.0. And what that does is when the contactor closes, because this is 0, 0.0, and this is 0, Q0.0, 0, 0, when the contactor gets power, this closes. It changes state, just like in a normal relay. And so that's pretty much the basics. It's not really much more than that. There's all kinds of more things you can do. You could hook it up. In future videos, I'll show you how to hook it up so that you could go stop, start, have an over, a thermal overload, maybe need a few switches, a timer, all kinds of stuff. You can set it so that the contactor only comes on after 5 seconds, shuts off after 10. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. But for now, that's all we need.